SketchUp is used by major architectural firms all over the world to explore buildings before they are constructed in the real world. Would you believe that the same tool set that professionals use is available to you in the free version of SketchUp? Let's put that tool set to work and build a more complex structure, like a schoolhouse. First, let's go to our SketchUp window and start a new document under File New. And we don't need to save any of those changes, so say no. To start our, our schoolhouse, we want to use our rectangle tool to create a building footprint. So we'll go to our rectangle tool and click once on the origin, move our cursor towards the top right corner of our screen, let go of the mouse, and we're going to type in 50 feet, comma, 100 feet. So that will be the footprint of our schoolhouse. Now that rectangle is drawn off of our screen, so we're going to use our navigation tools kind of orbit around and maybe zoom out a little bit and get this guy into focus and get all this geometry on our screen. If you ever find yourself kind of lost in a model where you can't really figure out where you are, you can always click on Zoom Extents. If you click on Zoom Extents, that'll put all the geometry in your model on your screen. So you just click on that magnifying glass with the four blue arrows and everything comes back onto your screen. Now, we're going to use our push-pull tool to pull this footprint up into a 3D mass. So activate your push-pull tool up there on the large tool set, and we click once to start, move our cursor up to suggest a direction, let go of the mouse, and type 30 apostrophe enter. And then I'm going to click on my zoom extents again to get everything centered on my screen. Now, we want to create a more complex roof than just a big flat block here, so we're going to use our offset tool and hover on your roof on the top of this block and we'll just click once to start move our cursor in to suggest a direction let go of the mouse and type one zero apostrophe enter next we're going to use our move copy tool and we're going to use a different feature of that it's called auto fold which will kind of automatically fold all of our edges to create a much more complex roof structure without us having to draw each piece individually. <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll hover on this rectangle right in the middle, click once to pick it up, and you notice that it has this tendency to be stuck to that surface. So if we tap the up arrow key, we can toggle that auto fold command on as well as lock our blue axis. So you can see how it's kind of folding those edges and creating those for us so we don't have to draw every single one. I'm going to move my cursor up on the blue axis there to suggest my direction and type 10 apostrophe enter. And then again, I'll just click on my zoom extents tool to get all of my geometry centered on my screen. Now to keep moving along and adding some detail here, let's go back to our offset tool and we want to create a parapet wall. So same thing, I'm going to click once to start, move my cursor to suggest a direction and type 1 apostrophe enter. So now I have that rim around there, and I can use my push-pull tool now to push the middle surface down. I click once to start, move my cursor down to suggest a direction, let go of the mouse, and type 3 apostrophe enter. And now we have that parapet wall. Now let's create some roof overhangs using that push-pull tool. So we're going to click once to start the push-pull, move it towards the inside of the building to suggest a direction and type 2 apostrophe enter. So now we've push pulled that guy in by two feet. And we have that two foot overhang and now to replicate that all around our model I can double click, come over here, double click, and then on the back side double click. So now we've pushed all those sides in and given that roof overhang all the way around by two feet. Now at this point you can see we've created some extra geometry that we don't really need. So we have these extra edges here that we want to use our eraser tool to delete out. And another uh, tip, when you're using your navigation on the mouse, if I'm orbiting and I'm zooming, keep in mind that whatever you're hovering on is the focal point of your navigation. So if I want to zoom in on this edge here, I don't want to put my mouse here and zoom. I need to put my mouse on what I'm focusing on and then roll my scroll wheel and it'll zoom right in on there. And I can zoom out, I can zoom over here, 
it makes it very easy if you keep in mind that the focal point of your navigation is whatever your cursor is positioned on. Zoom in on this guy and delete it. Okay, so now we've cleaned up some of that extra geometry in our model and now we want to use our push-pull tool and let's pull this guy down to give a roof fascia thickness. So we'll click once there, move our cursor down to suggest a direction, let go of the mouse and type in one apostrophe enter. So now we have a thickness applied to the face of that roof. And we can zoom out and take a look at what we've created. Now let's back out of this and let's add a site. So using your rectangle tool, we're not going to be too specific on this. We just want to draw a big rectangle around this entire building. So we'll just kind of add a site onto our model. And then furthermore, let's add a sidewalk. So I'm going to just kind of eyeball the middle here. I can even catch my midpoint. And then I'll just draw in a sidewalk using that rectangle tool. So we have our basic form created, but now we need to add some detail, so like some materials. So let's click on that paint bucket tool, and that will launch our materials browser. And let's add some different materials here. So we can go to our drop downs. And again, on the Mac, you want to make sure that you start with that brick. And then from there, you'll see your drop downs, and it'll look somewhat similar to to the PC version, but uh, the trick is that there's a brick icon that you want to click on to, to get to your libraries. So we're going to go to our brick and cladding, and I'm just going to choose this brick antique, and we'll paint all the sides of our schoolhouse here. So we paint those, and then I'm going to choose another uh, library, maybe roofing, and I'll pick uh, these shingles here. Those look pretty good. I'll paint my roof with those. All right, and then also I want to go to my, uh, let's see, vegetation. And here we have some grass, so I'll choose uh, this vegetation grass and then paint my site with that. And then also we can go to uh, asphalt and concrete, and I can paint a concrete material for my sidewalk. And it starts to add some more realism or detail to this model. Now also, if we go to our ground cover, we can get some gravel that we can put on the roof. So this is ground cover, gravel one inch. I'll add that to the roof. Now we have one more piece to add, which is our trim color. Uh, I'm going to go to my colors. And then let's just scroll through here. And I'm going to find something that seems like it would match that brick pretty nice. So. On my screen, I'm going to choose B16. You can choose whatever you'd like. And here's a little trick. The only, the only material left in our model is this uh, default material. So if I hold down Shift, I can click once to paint all of those surfaces. So it changes them all to that new material. So that's a little trick that if you hold down Shift, you get those three little squares next to your paint bucket tool. And when you click on a material, it will basically swap out anything that's painted the previous material with your new active color. So that way we don't have to piece through our model and pick every single surface. Alright, so at this point we can close our material browser and the form is looking really nice but we are definitely lacking some detail. So in order to add some detail let's use components because we don't want to have to build every single piece of this school because a lot of times there's already windows, doors, and things that are already created. If we go to Window Components, we can open up that component browser. And right here where we have this Google logo, we can do a search for EDU Tutorials. And if you search for EDU Tutorials, that will bring up this collection here. EDU Tutorials. Click on that guy. And now we have some components that we've created previously that are really perfect for this schoolhouse tutorial. Now the first component we should add is the front door. So I'll just zoom in here on my front of the building and I'm going to click on the EDU door. That's going to automatically download this guy. And then I can come down here and click right on my midpoint and position my door. So now notice that that component also cuts a hole in the surface, which is a real nice feature of components in SketchUp. 
All right, so now we want to add a window. To add a window, let's zoom over here towards that top left corner of the front of the school. And I'll just click on this larger EDU window. It's got the, the double window. Click on that. It automatically downloads. And again, notice how this window will automatically reorient itself to stick to a surface. And then also when I place it, it cuts a hole for me. Now we have our one window in there, but we want to have multiple. And remember, instead of pulling in window after window, we can do a copy and array. I'm just going to click once to pick it up, tap Control or Option on the Mac, and then you notice I want to move in the red direction, so I'll tap the right arrow key, and that locks my red axis. And then I can put this guy down maybe towards the end, and then type 4 divided by Enter and now I have four equal divisions between those windows. Now let's also make a copy of those windows to the second floor of our school. So using the selection tool we want to click once on that first window and to add to our selection we're going to hold down shift and notice when you hold down shift you get a plus and a minus sign. What that means is I can add to my selection or I can also click again to subtract. So we want to make sure we select only these five windows and then using your move copy tool we'll just click once to pick them up tap control or option on the Mac and then I'll move it straight down and you can see on my screen I'm snapping to 10 feet I'll click there that looks pretty good alright now to add the last level of detail to the front of this school building let's go to our smaller window I can click on that it automatically downloads and I'll drop that guy in there now at this point I can do the same thing, make a copy. So to make a copy I click once to pick it up, tap control or option on the Mac, and then I'll tap the right arrow key to lock my red axis. And then I'm just going to position this guy here, let go of the mouse and type 2 divided by enter. Now I'm going to use my selection tool and select each of these windows by holding down shift. And again with the move copy tool we click once to pick them up, tap control or option on the Mac to toggle our copy command. I'll tap the right arrow key and that locks my red axis and now I can position these guys over on the other side. And remember that at any time you can always right click off in the white space to clear your selection. So that's looking pretty nice by using simple forms, uh, simple modeling techniques, uh, we've created a fairly complex form and then combine that with pre-built SketchUp models or components and really added another layer of detail to this model. Okay, so now let's go back and take a look at what we've created here if we zoom out. And let's take five minutes to really complete the thought here. And we have some other components in here. We have the EDU shrub. You can add some shrubs. And I just want you to take a couple minutes to practice adding some of these components and positioning them and copying them and add that next layer of detail to your model. Uh, we also have an EDU tree. That's a pretty nice looking tree. So we can add that guy in there, maybe make a copy of it. And then we also have our flagpole we can throw out in the front. So that says our Google EDU on there. So with these components it makes it really easy to add a lot of extra detail to your model. So take five minutes to add those uh, additional windows to the other side of your building, add some trees and shrubs, and then we'll move on.